It's not just the Supreme Court. Lawmakers in just about every state are working hard to whittle away at LGBTQ rights. According to the Trans Legislation Tracker, lawmakers in 49 states introduced laws targeting the transgender community this year. So far, 84 have passed. 121 have failed. And more than 350 are still being debated. The only state that has not seen one of those bills in 2023 is the state of Delaware, at least for now. Delaware Online reports a Republican state senator could reintroduce a bill that has failed twice. Now, with a major Supreme Court decision rippling nationwide, hundreds of anti-LGBTQ bills still in the air, there's one state senator who's looking to turn the tide by running for Congress. Joining me now is Delaware State Senator Sarah McBride, who is running for the state's only congressional seat. If elected, she would be the first transgender person to serve in Congress. Sarah, it's an honor to have you on the show this morning. I do want to start with your reaction to the latest Supreme Court ruling limiting LGBTQ rights. What did you think when you heard that decision come down? Well, first off, good morning, Katie. Thank you so much for having me on. Throughout the last several years, this Supreme Court has consistently sided with the powerful over the vulnerable. And this past week, we saw that time and time again in their cases on affirmative action. And of course, in this case on LGBTQ rights, Creative 303 is one more attempt by this Supreme Court to corrupt the notion of religious freedom for their own personal political agenda. It creates a gaping hole in our nation's civil rights laws that don't just put LGBTQ people at risk, but put so many other marginalized communities throughout this country at risk. We have to make clear this July 4th, religious freedom is a fundamental American value. But what it has always been and what it should always remain is a shield to protect vulnerable religious minorities from persecution and not a sword to inflict harm on already vulnerable people. And this decision certainly reinforces the need for us to continue to fight, to continue to fight for equality for all, to continue to fight for opportunity for people regardless of their background. And while I'm not running to be the transgender member of Congress, I'm running to serve Delaware and to make progress on all of the issues that matter. The Supreme Court decision certainly reinforces the need for us to have a seat at the table in policymaking, for us to recognize that when we're talking about LGBTQ rights, we are talking about people. And at this critical moment with so many attacks on our community, to show LGBTQ young people that the heart of this country is big enough to love them too. You know, there's something that you said that really struck me, and I want to emphasize it for my viewers right now. You talked about the dual story of progress and pain, and you said we can turn that pain into progress as long as we summon the hope necessary to see this fight through. How? How do you have the optimism, the hope, the faith that you're going to be able to deliver these results for all people to make our communities safe and for people that feel marginalized and disenfranchised, what are you going to be able to do if you're able to successfully win and go to Congress? Well, first off, Katie, I have seen too much change. I have seen too much progress to lose hope now. When I came out, the idea that someone like me could serve authentically in a state legislature seemed so impossible that it was almost incomprehensible. When I ran for the state Senate, there were people who questioned whether the voters of this district were ready for someone like me. When I announced that I was going to be introducing the first private sector paid family and medical leave law here in Delaware, political observers said that we'd never get it done. We got it done in two years. I've seen too much progress to believe that we don't have the capacity to turn what might seem improbable, not just into possibility, but into reality. And, and the reality is, as we just finish up Pride Month and as we mark July 4th, the, the story of the LGBTQ community, but even more expansively, the story of our country is the story of every previous generation being able to face and ultimately conquer seemingly insurmountable odds. Whether we're talking about enslaved people in the 1850s who had no reason to believe that an Emancipation Proclamation was on the way, when we're talking about unemployed workers standing in bread lines who had never heard of a New Deal during the early days of the Great Depression, when we're talking about patrons at the Stonewall Inn who never knew of an America where they could marry the person they loved legally, every single generation of Americans 
had every reason to believe that change would never come. Yet they persevered, they summoned their hope, they found the light, and they changed the world. And I truly believe that our generation can do the same, that as long as we continue to fight for it and work for it, we can summon that hope and we can find the light. Well, I have to say, and I speak on behalf of several, that even in the face of an existential threat to your very existence, you continue to deliver a hope of message, uh, excuse me, a message of hope, and you're delivering results, which is what counts regardless of who you are and whatever community that you're a part of. Delaware State Senator Sarah McBride, we're going to wish you a lot of luck and we're going to keep an eye on you.